Hello everyone and welcome to the weird, scary and horrible parts of humanity. So I guess today we are doing a video about a shooting involving what John Oliver would describe as Big Daddy, the 2018 YouTube headquarters shooting which took place in San Bruno, California. Nassim Najaf Agdim was born on the 5th of April 1979 in Umayyah, Iran, the largest city in the West Azerbaijan province of Iran and the capital city of the Umayyah county of Iran, close to the borders with Turkey and Iraq, and the territory of the West Azerbaijan province bordering Armenia and the disputed territories of nagorno karabakh her family were of Azerbaijani descent and migrated from what was then the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic, a constituent republic of the Soviet Union, which existed from 1922 until 1991. She had one brother, Shahan Agdam. She migrated with her family to the United States of America in 1996. She was a member of the Baha'i Faith, a religion which teaches the essential worth of all religions and the unity of all people, with about 5 to 8 million adherents and members having been persecuted in Iran since the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Not a huge amount is known about her early life in the United States of America. However, she lived with her grandmother in Riverside County, California, with her close family also residing in Riverside County. She became a passionate vegan and animal rights advocate and in 2009 protested with PETA against the use of pigs in the United States Marine Corps training procedures for victims of trauma. During the protest she was interviewed by the San Diego Union Tribune and stated for me animal rights equal human rights. During the protest she dressed in a wig, wore jeans with painted blood on them and held a plastic sword. She was critical of Muslims and members of a Baha'i faith who ate animals and believed that veganism aligned with her beliefs in the Baha'i faith. She attended other protests with Peter, but after the shooting, a spokesperson for Peter stated that she only attended demonstrations in 2009 and then dropped out of sight after changing her phone number. She was also a bodybuilder and claimed to be the first Persian female vegan bodybuilder. Agdam became a social media influencer, posting content on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and YouTube in English, Persian, Azerbaijani and Turkish, with Sky News labelling her a YouTube wannabe with an alter ego. She had four YouTube channels. Her most popular channel was Nassim Subs, with 12,000 subscribers and 4 million views. Her second most popular channel, Yasil Nassim, had 11,000 subscribers and 2 million views. Her final channel created, Nassim Wonder One, had 5,000 thousand subscribers and one million views, while her third channel and least popular channel, Nassim Handmaids, had one thousand subscribers and a hundred thousand views. She was an early adopter to the platform, having joined in April 2010 when she launched a vegan TV commercial and vegan music video in Persian, which was shown on the Persian satellite television station Andishekh TV. Her videos discussed the Baha'i faith, workouts, animal cruelty and veganism, including posing with a rabbit and lion. She became popular in Iran where she was known as Green Nassim. For instance, in one video she discussed the benefits of eating a papaya. In another video she compared veganism with vegetarianism. In another video she was superimposed on a drawing of a cow in a field of flowers drinking milk from its udders. And in another video she captioned dog skinned alive and was pictured wearing a canine mask with painted drops of blood all over her. She ran a website called nasimsabs.com. Moreover, she had two Instagram pages, a vegan page and a Farsi Instagram page. Her vegan page, Vegan Nassim, Nassim Subs 1, had 16,200 followers, while her personal Instagram page, Nassim Subs 13, where she described herself as an athlete, artist, comedian, poet, model, singer, host, actor, director, producer, had 54,900 followers. However, her father Ismail Agdam said that she became angry at YouTube and hated the company for demonetizing her. For instance, in videos she had gained 300,000 views in total and made 10 cents. She claimed that YouTube was filtering her channels and preventing her from getting views. Gradually, since late 2016, her mental health became increasingly fragile. She claimed that she was subjected to discrimination and that YouTube had taken control of her Farsi channel, filtering her videos and suppressing her, thereby reducing her channel's presence and viewership. 
On her own website, she claimed that there was no free speech in the real world and claimed that she was being suppressed with no equal growth opportunity on YouTube. This was based on the fact that her new videos hardly got any views in her own words and her old videos stopped getting views. She compared herself to a slave. Her brother would later tell the media she was always complaining that YouTube ruined her life. Ultimately, she began to complain about the United States of America and became disillusioned with the American dream, claiming in Instagram videos that there was more freedom of speech in Iran. On the 18th of February 2017, in a lone protest on a highway in California, she held up a sign stating YouTube dictatorship, hidden policy, promotes stupidity, discrimination, suppression of truth, www.nasimsubs.com. Share if you hate discrimination. In June 2017, she sent an email to the legal support team at YouTube, claiming that she was a victim of discrimination and hatred, but the team sent her back an automated response on account activation. She also claimed that Google, which owns YouTube, was preventing people from finding her website. This paranoia was only heightened when her exercise videos got age restricted in January 2018, and she claimed by comparison that music videos of Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus were not age restricted. She compiled a video stating, I'm being discriminated, filtered on YouTube, Nassim, on her main channel with the video getting 1,089 views. Further fuel was added to the fire when YouTube changed its partner program requirements, and as a result, she was no longer eligible for monetization from February 2018. As a result of these changes, channels now needed at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time within the previous 12 months before ads could run on their videos. Previous to this, channels only needed 10,000 views to be eligible for ads. In essence, one of the big problems for Agdam is that this was her life. She had no normie job and no career outside of social media channels. Unlike for many of us, this was not a part-time hobby. So when she wasn't making money on YouTube, she wasn't making money and her mental health deteriorated as a result. Perhaps putting it best, her father, Ismail Agdam, would later tell NBC News that YouTube stopped everything, and now she has no income. But it wasn't just YouTube and Google that she was angry at. She put a picture of her tire online, which appeared to show a nail in her tire, stating, in a sign of her deteriorating and increasingly worsening mental health, she was being attacked by anti-vegan business-supporting criminals who were trying to kill her because of animal rights awakening stickers on her car. Agdam purchased and registered a 9mm Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistol from the gun range San Diego on the 16th of January 2018. She was last seen by her family on the 31st of March 2018. On the 2nd of April, her father and brother reported her missing and Ismail Agdam said that he was worried that she might be heading to YouTube's headquarters on 901 Cherry Avenue in St. Bruno, California, about 12 miles or 19 kilometers south of the center of San Francisco, and were warned by police that she might do something. However, YouTube was not warned. She had stopped answering her phone, which deeply worried her family. In reality, she was sleeping in her car, having driven down to San Bruno. On the 2nd of April 2018, Agdam travelled down to YouTube headquarters, asking for a job, but was told that she would have to apply online. At 1.40am on the morning of the 3rd of April 2018, police officers found her sleeping in her car in a Walmart parking lot in Mountain View, 25 miles or 40 kilometers south of YouTube's headquarters. The officers were unaware of the concerns of Agdam's father and did not identify her as a threat. During the conversation, she did not mention YouTube and said that she had travelled down to see her family and was looking for a job. They contacted her family and about an hour after talking to police, her father reiterated to the Mountain View Police that his daughter was upset with YouTube and that she may be targeting them. The next day, on the 3rd of April 2018, she went to a shooting range, Jackson Arms Shooting Range in South San Francisco, where she struggled to hit the targets and was seen as a terrible shot. She spent less than an hour there, leaving at around 11.45am. One hour later, Agdam parked her car in a parking lot next to YouTube's San Bruno's campus and entered through the company's parking structure. There was minimal security with no metal detectors. Walking east in the courtyard, she fired her Smith & Wesson indiscriminately on employees eating their lunch. She fired 10 shots before loading with another magazine. 
Employees of YouTube initially thought it was an earthquake before they saw blood drops on the floor and stairs. At 12.46pm, San Bruno Police received reports of a shooter at the YouTube headquarters. Employees of YouTube fled through broken glass and the headquarters lobby doors. YouTube senior software engineer Zach Voris fled the building and alleged that Agdam shouted in the courtyard, Come at me or come get me. Agdam injured three people directly, all of whom were employees at YouTube and all of whom were unnamed. A 36-year-old man, a 32-year-old woman and a 27-year-old woman with an additional person injuring her ankle while fleeing YouTube headquarters. According to San Bruno Police, there was no evidence that she specifically targeted these individuals or knew them. Police arrived at 12.48pm with a wounded transported to San Francisco General Hospital and Stanford University Medical Center at 1.04pm. All five were released shortly thereafter. Agdam killed herself and died through a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the entrance of a YouTube headquarters. A total of 20 ejected shell casings were located at the scene, with one round remaining in the firearm. Her parents were shocked by what took place, unable to comprehend why Agdam would shoot other people, having previously never shot anyone, with her father telling Good Morning America on ABC that she had not previously been violent and he didn't know that she owned a gun. Her father, speaking to NBC News, apologised to all the humans and said that his daughter wouldn't hurt an ant. This was echoed by her brother, who told ABC News that she was a good person who wouldn't hurt anything. The CEO of YouTube, Susan Wojcicki, tweeted, there are no words to describe how horrible it was to have an active shooter at YouTube today. Our deepest gratitude to law enforcement and first responders for their rapid response. Our hearts go out to all those injured and impacted today. We will come together to heal as a family. CEO of Google, which owns YouTube, Sundar Pichai, described the shooting as an unimaginable tragedy and horrific act of violence. The CEOs of Uber and Amazon, Tim Cook and Jeff Bezos, offered their condolences with CEOs of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, Uber, Dara, Kwashwashai, used for shooting to call for stricter gun control legislation. Then Vice President Mike Pence, then Minority Leader of the United States House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi, and Senator Dianne Feinstein tweeted their condolences regarding the shooting, with then President Donald Trump briefed on the shooting and tweeting our thoughts and prayers are with everybody involved. Thank you to our phenomenal law enforcement officers and first responders. The Baha'i National Center condemned the shooting and extended condolences to individuals hurt by the shooting. Agdam's YouTube videos and her channels on YouTube were taken down, as were her Facebook, Telegram, Twitter and Instagram accounts. However, some of her content can be viewed using the Wayback Machine and in news reports from the shooting. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to inform yourself when new videos come out. Also, why not hit that like button and leave a nice comment. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet. Have an amazing day and remember that truth is always more interesting than fiction.